People, welcome back to another John Sinclair TV back again tonight, and it's a special show. And I've got a legend who used to play for Newcastle for two seasons, and I've got Brian Kilkline, IG Brian. Good evening, John. How are you? I'm absolutely fine. I mean, I've got to thank Luis as well to bring you in as well. And, um, you know, we're also to get a legend on the um, channel as well. But thank you so much for coming in and giving to you, Louise. Louise. Hello. Uh, great to be here. What an exciting show we should have tonight. I'm looking forward to some really good crack and getting a bit of insight and asking you some interesting questions. I've got a list. I've got a list. <laughs> cool stuff. Cool stuff. You've been charging questions tonight and, um, you know, I've got one as well from Brian as well. So thank you for coming in, guys. And um, if you like the video or like what you see, then please give it a like. Make sure you sub the channel. Also, if you like to super chat, it's open as well. Um, just give channels worth and you'd like to become a member just 99p and you'd be automatically entered in the 50 pound e voucher draw as well taking place in september before you start the show live uh, just go read out the house rules please remember to keep comments respectfully not all caps duplicates no discussing or promoting other channels unless given permission by me allow mods to mod why you enjoy the show thank you very much indeed for that guys and hi to chess and yes, ninety-nine p to become member. Hi to Jules. Welcome, Brian. Great to have you to join us as well. Thank you, Jules. Hi to Leslie. And um, welcome to the chat as well. And hi to um, hi to Jed. Hi to Stephen. I hope you well, mate. Welcome. And everyone chatting there. It's well, just great. And Leslie saying, "Wow, Viking Klein, looking good, legend." <laughs> I'm still moving. I was still able to move, not as quick as I couldn't before. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still as good in the air? Oh, yeah. I wouldn't like. To, I wouldn't like to jump. I wouldn't like to jump up in the air and be able to land. I can't jump up roof anymore, so I wouldn't like to jump up in the air and to be able yeah. to land on dodgy knees. Bless. Bless him. Do me there as a backup as well for Sean Botman as well. Um, big up to Gareth Cooper. Hi to you, Gareth from Cardiff. And hi to again, less as well. So, right, what well, we're going to start with, um, Brian. I mean, um, like I said, thanks for coming in. I mean, um, you spent two seasons with Newcastle United, um, back in 92 94 season, 32 appearances, zero goals. And, um, when Kevin Keegan signed you up, was it an easy decision for you to come to Newcastle United? Did you have to think about it? Did you think, oh, I want to play for Kevin? Uh, no, I didn't have to think about it. I think I arrived on the Wednesday, trained on the Wednesday afternoon and played on the Saturday. Uh, that's as quick as it was. And that's how football was. There was none of this uh, trying to sort out a contract. You know, like you, that's all you ever seem to hear on the radio and television now. They're spending weeks and months sorting. It's very easy uh, in my day because there wasn't that kind of money going around. So you either got a wage slip or you didn't. And uh, the thoughts of coming up to Newcastle. I can remember driving in that gate, the old gate, all them years ago, and you're just tingling. And then just seeing Terry Mack and Kevin Keegan coming down the steps. Yeah, yeah. You'd have paid them to play for Newcastle then. Oh, bless. Did yes. they give you any instructions, uh, like, you know, on what they wanted you to do? Or did they just say, come in and lead? Or did you just figure out you had to lead? No. I remember we were playing against Sunderland and uh, we'd gone in training that morning and uh, they were talking about how we were going to go and play against Sunderland and uh, Kevin Keegan, all he said to me was just be yourself. I thought, crikey, what does it mean by be yourself? What does that mean, be yourself? You know, you're expected to say you wanted to play the ball down here, give the ball, no, just be yourself. And at the time, because we, uh, I was living in Yorkshire and playing for Newcastle, we were staying at uh, the hotel, the Gosworth. Uh, I went back to the Gosworth Hotel and I thought, I'm going to go and have to ask a few of the Newcastle punters around, you know, what's this game against Sunderland all about? And without hesitation and without repetition, every Geordie I spoke to says, as long as you, I'm not going to do the Geordie accident because I don't do it any justice. As long as you go out and nail the, any Sunderland player, they'll be over the moon. Then I understood what Kevin Keegan meant by be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
I tell you what, though, we really came, really came to Newcastle, and we were fighting relegation. Sixteen games to go when Kevin Keegan took over the club, and um, when he stayed up, when we stayed up, and in the last game of the season, it must have been quite a relief for you, Brian, and then the players as well. And Kevin kept us up, and then the following season, it was history. We got promoted. Yeah, well, he brought some good players in. You talk about the last game of the season. Um, it wasn't a relief for me because we played in the game. It was just like a normal game of football. And we won mm. it and we were over the moon and then we were going to arrange to meet in a hotel just outside of Leicester to have a few drinks. So I went to get in my car and it'd been towed away. Oh, because, bless you. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> man. Then, because then <laughs> I lived in Yorkshire. We were playing Leicester. So Kevin Keegan used to let me go home earlier on the Friday so I'd drive from home to Leicester. So me, and I hate being late for anything, so I drove from my from my home in, in Yorkshire to the football ground, got there early, and parked out just by the ground. But I didn't realise that Newcastle were going to bring as many supporters as they were, and Leicester Constabulary were going to be... I'm not allowed to swear, and I'm trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> Being absolute arses, uh, put a cordon, uh, co uh, you know, they, they boxed everything off. So you couldn't get within a mile or two miles of the football ground. Well, I'd already parked and I was already in the stadium and I was already getting ready for the game against Leicester. So we played the game. We won 2-1. Me and the missus came out over the moon and uh, the car had gone. And I had to walk through the Newcastle supporters, which is brilliant, and the Leicester supporters, which they weren't too bad neither, to get to the police station, to pick my car up, to go and meet the lads. I can uh, imagine if they'd known it was your car, they would have brought it back. Yeah, had, had they realised whose they, car they took, can you imagine? They are already committed <laughs> to it. Said, I don't know, I don't know. But it's, <laughs> it's just typical of my life. You know, it's, it's, nothing just works out normally. But I love it that way anyway. I've always got a story about that game. I can't remember much about the game, but I can remember not getting me car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brilliant. Man. I saw a question from somebody else saying, what was it like to be managed by Kevin Keegan? Yeah, that was, um, I believe, that was Steve. Um, Kevin Keegan was a, he was an inspirational kind of person. He, he wasn't a coach. He was just an inspirational kind of person. Uh, a prime example was he said, be yourself. He brought players in who knew how to play football and he put them in different positions and he just says, go out and play. So you knew how to play centre half or you knew how to play like a fullback or you knew how to play like a winger or you knew. He just, he just made the atmosphere just unbelievable. It was electric and it was, just, it was just a great... In all walks of life, people do a job and football was a job. But he made a place that you wanted to be. You wanted to go in. And how many people I know that do something that they're going, oh, God, I've got to do that today. I've got to go in. They can't wait for the week to finish. When, when we were playing with New, uh, Newcastle and Kevin Keegan, you just wanted it to keep on going. You couldn't wait for the next day to start again. Yeah, I can see some parallels yeah. to the current team. I can see Jay's got a question there. Do you want to do it, John? Yeah, I sure do. Big up to Jay, by the way. Hope you're okay. Thank you for coming. Any questions for the legend, get fired in and we do the best we can to reach out to the legend as well. Um, question for Jay. Um, who was the toughest striker you played against? Toughest striker? Yeah, you faced. Uh, they're, they're all different. They're all di toughest or hardest or... Well, yeah, well, to... toughest, hardest, which um, he said toughest. Well, but... I, well, I can tell you a story about Kevin Keegan. Kevin Keegan yeah. just come back from uh, Germany and he was playing for Southampton. And uh, I had a manager. Um, who was my manager then? he just come back from Southampton. I might have been at Notts County. And Hal Wilkinson has gone to me. Uh, killer. He says, Kevin Keegan's just come back from Germany. Go out there. And show him what he's missed and give him a good scene to No worries, boss. So I've gone out, we've come back after the game. Uh, we've got beat 3 1. Keegan scored two goals. 
Hal Wilkinson's come up to me and he's gone, can I swear? Go for it. He, Kevin Keegan said to me, what the fuck were you doing? <laughs> no, no, not Kevin Keegan. Hal Wilkinson said Hal to me, Wilson. what the fuck are you doing? I says, honestly, I couldn't get near the little bandit. <laughs> every time I pull my leg back to every time I pull my leg back to kick him, he'd gone. Because playing in Germany, one touch football, he couldn't get near him. So every time I went to kick him, he'd passed it and gone. And that was at Southampton. Uh Rushy, uh quick as Grice, Grice uh, uh quickest thing you've ever played against. Del Gleish, you couldn't get the ball off him because his arse was that big he couldn't get around it. Yeah. Uh, but actual physical, um, there was a lad called, there was a lad who played for, um, for Newcastle, centre forward. Oh, God, what was his name? He wasn't playing for Newcastle then. He was playing for, he was playing for Oxford. Oh, God. Oh, is it, um, not Billy Whitehurst. Um, Billy Whitehurst, yeah. That, Billy Whitehurst. That's, that's the one. Yeah. yeah, I went to head a ball out at the back post and he kicked me in the face. So he knocked wow. me spot, lost a few teeth. And so uh, I got stretched off. And then it was fun when we played each other again. Uh, well, I'm now thinking that now I understand why Keegan had just said, go and be yourself, because Keegan knew from experience what it was that you would bring. Yeah. How he knew. Exactly. Yeah. Just well, hoping that I wasn't going to play. It's just hoping I wasn't going to play against somebody else that, looked, that played like Keegan did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, back in those days in the 80s, sort of thing, you were starting to play. There wasn't much diving in those days. It's just, if you get hit, you just get up and get on with it, you know, if they touch you, sort of thing, you get them back. Yeah. These today, today's game, you touch them now, and it just fell over like a pack of cards, man. Yeah, it was, it was, a phys- it was, a, it was like a war, you know. You had to earn the right to play football. There's not many times you played a, a pure game of football. But uh, I don't like talking... A, I, I didn't like it then when the older players talk about the game that I was playing and I'm an older player talking about the game that's been played now. I always sort of think as when I played, we were like cart horses. The lads that are playing now are all thoroughbreds. Mm. They're a lot leaner, they're fitter, they're a lot quicker. And, to, and being quicker, all you have to do is touch them a lot of the time and they'll go over so I can understand that. I've said, just stood beside him. They're all lean, tall. Yeah, I wouldn't have played many games in this this sort of genre. But then again, I might have been a different person, a different player. Would you? Would you not, fancy it? I might not have drank all the beer and put all the weight on, and I might have had to have got around the pitch a lot quicker. <laughs> <laughs> hard, hard to ever know, isn't it? We'll never know. No, hey. no. Got a question for you from. Mr. Trey, um, how did Killer get up the Wembley steps with an Easter egg on his thigh? And that's from Billy. Oh, it wasn't an Easter egg. That was an absolute giant. That was a melon. That was an absolute melon. And there was nothing going to stop me from getting up there. The lad said to me, I said, it's all right for me to go up. This is Killer, get, get your ass up there. Get up there. But I sweat. It was, um, it was a hematoma of the legs. I don't know if the lad that asked the question knew. It was a hematoma. So I'll, from... Being a very silly tackle, it's sort of bled in the muscle. Mm. But what happened, the leg just swells up twice the size. So by the time I got by the time I got to the to pick the trophy up, my leg was twice the size it should have been. And it's the only game that I never had a drink after. The cup final is the only game I never had a drink of alcohol afterwards. Because I had to go to bloody hospital the next day. What a shame. Bless. You're not kidding. <laughs> But the lads, the lads kept on coming up to my room and going, "Killer, you're missing a great night." And I, and I can't, I'm not going to swear again, but I would, I did swear quite a lot then, <laughs> as they kept on coming up saying, "You're missing a great night." So what happened was the next day I got on the bus, we went to the town hall, I went straight out the back door and straight to hospital. Wow, <laughs> what an unbelievable it set is. of events! It is, it is. I mean, I mean, culture massive, massive underdogs against Tottenham at 87 um, FA Court. And knowing that I did expect culture to win that game, and they've done it. But um, look. You did it. Time. You did it. No, 
Legend. We weren't underdogs because we, we have a good team. We, we, there was yeah, good yeah. Keith Houghton was up front as well. Keith Houghton played up front as well, and he was really good. Dave, is was Dave Bennett was played a, like, he was a monster. And on his day, Dave Bennett could could go past anybody. Yeah. And then we had some other. We had some lads in the midfield, like like there was Dave Phillips at the back who took uh, who, who's done well in his career. There was uh, uh, Greg Downs, Trevor Preet, a most underrated player that played at the back. The Steven Grisovich that played, I think he started in prehistoric times, and uh, I think he's only just finished in goal. <laughs> Amazing. I can see Jay's asking another question about whether you have any memories or run-ins with Brian Clough. Oh, Brian Clough, eh? <laughs> uh, Clough, when I, uh, my first, my first experience of professional football was, um, I played in the school team that never won a game for four years. And then on the fifth year, for some reason, we got to the final of sc some school football tournaments. And the final was played at the city ground, Nottingham. Yeah. And after they played, Nottingham Forest played Sheffield United and they beat Sheffield United 6-1. Terry Curran scored a hat full of goals and we played on the pitch afterwards. And we won 3-2. I scored the equaliser and the winner. And Brian Clough came past all the players and he came up to me and he says, you didn't do too bad, young man, the way he spoke. And, you know, I thought, yeah, thank you very much. Went home to me dad, and my dad said I was crap. <laughs> 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 That's just way on. But when, Kev when uh, Brian Clough spoke to me, all I could smell was alcohol. Because I think they just got run 6-1, and I think they just celebrated in the dressing room after the game. And then he came out and looked at all the young, well, looked at the young team that had played uh, on, in the final, the school's final. And so that was my first experience of uh, Brian Clough. But every time I used to see Clough, he used to hit me. Wow. Because I'm Knox County instead of Forest. Because I'm old-fashioned, like, sort of loyal. And Knox County asked me first. So I went with Knox County. Yeah, he should have been quicker. Quicker? <laughs> I mean, you, don't, you can't say Knox Forest. Though. You're not, like, so you can say Nottingham Forest. You're not going to say Knox Forest. You know what I mean? So... Nottingham Forest, yeah. Uh, you get but lynched. then every time Notts County played Forest, we beat them. Excellent. Excellent. Best response. Yeah. Okay. I, can, um, I can see. Go on. Go on, sorry. I mean, I've got a question for Sparky D. How to Sparky D. Um, how good was Peter Beersley um, in your time? Peter Beersley, best player I've ever played with, or best player I've ever played against, without wow. doubt. Wow, absolute class! I tell you, he'd be a six-figure. To if he like, he'd be a nine-figure player today, like hundred million minimum. If he's if he's playing first today, I'm telling you, and he would. <sighs> they can't afford him. Pete Close cannot afford this guy. I'm telling you now because to me, he's one of the best I've seen in a black and white shirt with his skills as well. But still, he, he, he just made things happen. He just made things happen. Ease with ease. Yes. Uh, well, it was just a natural. It was like, well, they're, they're all naturals now. They've all got their own little bits. They're all... Footballers are different. They're different animals now. Uh, and the game is played, played differently. Um, it's quicker. When, when they pull the finger out, it's quicker. Would you prefer to have played when you played? You know, assuming that you were... And it's hard to guess... I, I suppose, would you play now if, if you could? You know, if you were of this time, would you be a footballer, do you think? Would you want to be a footballer? I wouldn't be the person I am today. I, I wouldn't have been able to get away with the things I got away with. That's as far as I'm going to say. <laughs> football, I was... football was a different game and footballers' lives were completely different. And, sure. Uh, yeah, um, got one here from Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Which central defender in the Premier League does Brian think has the best attributes today? Oh. <laughs> I tell you, the lad, the lad at Newcastle is a good player, Boatman. Yeah, so I like him. 
Even he, he's a but even the lad, the young lad, that's just at Man City as well. That's just gone into midfield. They played him in midfield in eight for England. He's a good player. Um, and then I watched, I I watched Manchester United versus Newcastle, and Newcastle beat them two nil. And they had the two little centre halves playing at the back for them. They're different sort of players now. They're centre halves that keep the ball, and I keep uh, I. Budgie, you know the goalkeeper, John Burridge? Burridge, yeah. He keeps on going absolutely mental about goalkeepers rolling the ball out to the full-backs or the centre-halves and then playing short balls around the eight of their own 18-yard box. When I was playing, you got the ball. If you got the ball, you knocked it down the channel as far away from your goal as possible. And if you're going to give it away, you give it away in their half, not in your own half or in your own penalty box. So the game's played completely different. I think any centre half that's got pace has got half a chance. But if you've got yeah. pace and the height, yeah, it's even better. Yeah, well, the thing is, right, just... playing against. Go on, Louise. Uh, I'm just just nodding and taking it all in and trying yeah. to think. There's about there's been about six questions there. <laughs> I don't know there if you've is. got them all. I know. I've got one from Leslie, one from Billy as well. And um, yeah, and um, start with Leslie first, but uh, you just mentioned the games quickly as well. Gone quicker. I have to agree. I mean, a lot of pressing. It was never that in the 90s, but it's completely different. And have you um, have you heard you said you didn't like the fame side of football? How did you cope in that in Newcastle of all places? What? With, with what? With what? Right. Yeah, like, uh, do, uh, unless it's just asking you, um, heard, have you, I've heard you said you didn't like the fame side of football. How do you uh, cope in in Newcastle, basically? No way that, well, Newcastle, I never like the fame. It's just, you just didn't notice it because when I was at Newcastle and King, uh, Kevin Keegan used to look, look after me very well because I used to, we played the game on the Saturday. He didn't have to turn up until the Tuesday. I'd say that I'd train the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. And because of where all the games were, I'd go home on the Friday after training on the Friday. So and you weren't you weren't mixing that much. You were doing the training. Probably I might have gone out on a Wednesday night with Ed, uh, David Kelly and Kevin Sheedy. Uh, but we would have gone out somewhere quiet and just had the crack. Um, mm -hmm. But no, it's and in, and in and in my day, in my day, you, people might have been in awe of you. But maybe because I was a big, giant galoot, people never used to come near. You. So I was all right with that. So the half the time, they were sort of half of them were scared, especially the way I used to carry on on the pitch. So they didn't want me doing that to them. <laughs> Off the wow. I mean, I'm trying to carry on the pitch. You're six foot two. <laughs> six foot four. I was six, oh, foot, six four. foot four. Yeah. Six foot four when I was playing, but I'm getting older and I'm shrinking. <laughs> no, you're not. You don't look a moment 21, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I question for Billy as well. Um, what, what was Brian's best free kick, best free kick goal he scored? Or oh, dead ball, dead ball, yeah. Brian's best free uh, kick. Uh, oh, not me that. I might have scored. I'm trying to think now. There was a couple. There's quite a few. There was a couple when I was at Coventry, but I can't remember. To be perfectly honest with you, I'd love to be able to remember it. Uh, la, 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 la. I might have scored one against Southampton. Yeah, that's one of them. I might have scored one against Southampton. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. But the, I scored one and I, it's identical to the one that Gazza scored in a, it was at the cup final. Yeah, that was you know, against it's from, Arsenal. From miles away. I did exactly I think, the same. <laughs> I, I think Billy's a real okay. fan here. He is. Getting, yeah, <laughs> Billy's a real <laughs> fan. They don't mention it. See, because he's Gaza, that's going to look better. <laughs> because he's a big hairy eight playing for Coventry, they never said anything about that. 
Yeah, there's quite a few you scored against as well from three kicks as well. I mean, I think Sam's one of them. Luton's another one as well. And um, I mean, that, was on couple... the, that was on the just that was just in free play. But you see, the things I used to take the, key, uh, the penalties as well for Coventry. Yeah, I yeah. mean, because um, you played with Coventry for um, for seven seasons, hundred and seventy three appearances. Yeah. 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 133 points is 28 goals and um, a legend, Coventry legend as well. And look, what a time. I think, is that your best moment um, in your career playing for Coventry? Because you spent quite a long time playing for them for seven years. And Or would you prefer I'd, Newcastle? I'd, I had best moments everywhere. I played I, all the clubs. All, Newcastle's the only club that didn't chase me out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Newcastle that was one of the hardest ones that was one of the hardest places to leave because we left we went out the back door uh, when I left Newcastle I went out the back door and Rule Fox came in the front door when Foxy joined Newcastle is when I went out the back door that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do but I wanted to play and I knew I could never play at Newcastle because the young lads were too good and you couldn't get back in the team and plus, I was getting too many splinters on my arse on the bench. <laughs> and yeah. I think we're, we're seeing the same again now, aren't we? We're seeing some of the players, you know, like, like Dan Byrne, maybe. You know, we're, we're seeing that maybe they're going to be replaced. Now, having got us to where they've got us to, then, you know, I, I've said I think there's going to be a bigger squad, but there there is going to be a lot of sitting on the bench going on for all of them, I think. And so you cho you chose to go. You chose to to go and play football, so at least you know you you made that choice to to play. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think uh, Eddie Howe's got a group of very good lads, very good players, and 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 I think they all understand what's going to be going on, and yeah. I think they're all going to be good for the dressing room. You know, the likes of Dan Byrne, I've met him a couple of times now, and what a nice fellow he is. You know, he makes me feel like a little boy when you're standing beside him. <laughs> but uh, but what a nice lad. And I think he understands it. He knows he'll play and he'll do as, as well as he can for as long as he can. But, you know, Newcastle, it's not about the players. It's about the football club. So you've got to bring people in. They've got to bring in somebody better than Dan Byrne. Now, that's going to be a hell of a player. And he'll understand that. Mm. You know, and I think that's so. Going to be all the, and that's yeah. going to be all the way across the board. You know, if the lads that are playing in the team at the moment are not going to be playing because there's somebody else in their position, that's somebody else who's got to be a hell of a player because they've got a very good team there at the minute. We have. Sure. We have indeed. And, and uh, even Joel Linton as well. I mean, he's turned his career around Joel Linton, yeah? And this name should be first on the team sheet for what he has done. I mean, Eddie Howe's done a fantastic job bringing Joel Linton, not just making the best one of the best players in the Premier League, Right, for getting that Brazilian national team as well, and to get the Brazilian national team, you got to be special. Yes, I'll be a, you see the thing is when I used to go up there when Newcastle was struggling, when Joel Linton had just arrived at the football club, mm. and he was he was having a hard time, and people told me that this this lad they just paid a lot of money for, and he's and he's he's not very good, and he's all this. So I went up and had a look, and I watched, and you could see. I said, why isn't he very good? Because he got around the pitch like you wouldn't believe. But every time he got in front of goal, he, he, it just didn't happen for him. And I wished, and I wished he'd score. Because it was a case of just score, and it might just take, you know, it might just blow up, you know, his, 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 his career at Newcastle would take off. But it just never happened. And then one lad gets injured and he drops back into a position of midfield and he's never looked back since then. He didn't need to score a goal. He just needed to move position. Incredible. And now, and now he's scoring the goals from a different position and creating goals for fun and stopping people from scoring. Yeah. So can you? Can I, just before um, Sparky gets an, another question in, can I just yeah. ask you about how you see the comparison, or if there is one, between Eddie Howe and Kevin Keegan? Are they similar? What's, what's similar? What's dissimilar? They bring a similar sort of inspiration, it seems. Uh, no, I think Kevin Keegan was more an inspirational person. And I think Eddie is 
and he has more. He loves the game, but I think he knows the game, and he he's more a psychologist as well. I think he he plays with people's minds, and, and he he doesn't play with them, but he knows how to get the best out of people, uh, which is a gift. Uh, uh, and he did it at Bournemouth. He did it with the players that he had down there, and I think it would be very hard to say when he's when Eddie Howe is a lot older and he's got a lot more uh, games under his belt, uh, then you can make sort of make comparisons. But he's a young man that is going going places because I, th- I think he knows where he wants to go and, and he's proven. And the players like him. That's another thing. I think the, I, sorry, I think the players like him. I've never asked the players, do they like him? But they must like him because he he moves players around, he moves them in and out, uh, uh, and every time he brings a player on, they give another dimension to the football team. And so I think they have tremendous respect for him as well, and that's one of the things that I could see with Kevin Keegan that the players respect him, and I, yeah. maybe for different reasons, but they are both yeah. respected. Great. Yes, yes. Yes, totally. And with Eddie Howe as well, I mean, he's a young manager, he's modern, he's 45 years of age, and you know what it is, right? I mean, um, I thought when he first came to the club, I thought, well, is he going to make it at Newcastle United? And I said, OK, we give this guy a chance, and I'm going to back the honest, I'm going to back the judgment, and here we go. I mean, Eddie Howe comes in, 18 months, gets his Champions League football, and, and the rest is history. Yeah, we've seen things... This is one thing that's bad about football. Like they all expect people, people to be the finished object or the finished article. I love it that Newcastle or the owners of Newcastle have gambled on, on bringing somebody in that's got a potential, and they've given him, he's they've given him the tools, and Eddie Howe has seen the potential in a lot of players, and he's given them the field. And it's worked out perfectly. It's worked out perfectly. And they're getting people all around them that are looking for the potential in people. Because I don't think you should bring the finished article in. I think you should always bring somebody that can add to the football Mm. club. Or the football club can add to them. Um, I think sometimes, or the years ago, they used to bring the finished article in. But they were the finished article of where they were. Now you take that person out of one environment and try and get them to do what they were doing before with a group of different players. You've got to... Newcastle have got to evolve. Eddie Howe will, will evolve. And if he can get... And, I've, and I'm seeing what they're doing behind the scenes. They're buying a lot of very good young players. Great. So they are going to try and make the football club evolve. So they're going to bring some good young players... What was it? What was the young lads? Is it Miley, Smiley? What was the young lad that came? Lewis Miley, Riley. Now it's a young lad. Now there's there's somebody that's going to evolve. I've not seen him play. You might have seen him play and might be able to tell me, you know, what can he bring to Newcastle? Um. Well, I only watched him once as well. I never heard of the guy's name until he played against Chelsea, and he looks so cool. He's so cool in the midfield. Nothing seems oh. to phase him. I think he's a decent pass of the ball, and you know what? I mean, I I know Loppy's going to say send him out on loan. I do not want this guy to go out on loan. I want him to learn to like please like Joel Linton, Bruno, Sean Longstaff, and make Lewis a much better player so he can learn from them. He will get games, probably in the cup games, but for me, I think he needs to steer and learn from them. Do, do you think, Louise? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy with that. I think he should. And his brother's at the club as well, a bit like the Longstaffs. So it is. Yeah. So just my Brian, you were talking about your look earlier on. My look, I've seen the other brother um, when he when he played yeah. in the Newcastle's under twenty ones. I haven't I haven't seen Lewis yet. Um, so Sparky's asked a question, and I've been talking over him for ages. So no. we get Sparky's question out there. No, that's fine. I've got some Sparky and Billy as well. Did you get on with David Speedy, a commentary, um, Brian? Because he's a bit of a fiery one, isn't he? Uh, David, <laughs> David, um, and I, I apologise to anybody there. 
he had a bit of a, a small man syndrome. He just he was angry all the time, and he'd been a jock as well. Didn't help. So, <laughs> we, but he got me out of a lot of trouble sometimes because of the play. I, I saw him score one of the greatest goals ever mm. from chipping somebody that was about six foot seven. He was about four yards away from him. He was a great goal scorer. Yeah, but he was. He was, uh, he was a very angry little Scotsman. That's all yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I got on with him fine. I got on with him fine. Cool, cool. I mean, he was good in this day as well for Chelsea, Liverpool. and I played against him. It was Dixon and uh, uh, Speeds up front. And we played against Chelsea. I think I might have played against them when I was at Notts County. And it wasn't a problem. Mm-hmm. You know, he kicked me. I kicked him. <laughs> well, you, you, no, you're too big for him. Please. You're too big for him. You can knock him out. <laughs> yeah, but some, yeah, well, my father always used to say, Watch the small ones. They're the ones you've got to watch. Mm. But, yeah, they're the ones that start the trouble. And it all kicks off and then they just slip away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it, man. Love it. Got one for Billy as well. Um, who was the maddest keeper killer played with? Would have been would have been Raddy Avramovich. The maddest? Yeah, who was the maddest keeper? All goalkeepers are mad to an extent, aren't uh, they? Yeah. Budgie's, Budgie takes some beating. And Budgie was at the end of his career when I was with him at Newcastle. Raddy wasn't mad. Raddy was a very, very good goalkeeper uh, at, New- at uh, Notts County. A very good goalkeeper. And apparently he went on to become a very good coach in the South, uh, uh, in Asia. He, he's very well thought of over there. But Raddy was, uh, he was excellent. He was an excellent goalkeeper. Okay. Oggy, yeah, they're, they're all mad. There was uh, Oggy, you see, I didn't have many that many goalkeepers because Oggy was, he was there the whole time. He signed just before me at Coventry and he was there seven years after I left. Wow. wow. That's amazing. It certainly is. It certainly is. Um, yeah, I'll see some bad keepers in my time, but that's one of a day. Um, question from Jules. Hi, Jules. Um, as we're looking for the future of our fantastic owners, manager, squad and fans, what are your hopes for Newcastle going forward? My hopes? Yeah, what's your hopes going? Uh, well, well, last year, last year I had a bet on Newcastle finishing in the top six. And they finished in the top four. Wow. So, if I go into the bookies now and say that they're going to win the league next year, I wonder what the kind of odds I'll get on that. Or probably about um, 80 to 1. No, I'll tell one. you one thing. They'll be very short because when I couldn't believe the sh- how short the odds were of them finishing in the top six. Wow. i tell you what, though. I wanted I wanted um, top here to end a cup run as well. But to get fourth and get to the final of the, um, the Carabao Cup, I think it's absolutely amazing. Another day, another month, we didn't beat Man United because I don't think this Man United team were that good. I mean, they're not... They're, this is not a team. It's got yeah, um, manager Fergie, manager um, had Roy Keane in it, sort of thing. Some of those players, yeah, are not Man United, but that's for another time. But I think we would have won the Car- uh, Carbo Cup if it was like yeah. a month later. Yeah, but there's a, there's a lot of teams like Coventry City around, like you know, they can you know come up and spank you on the spank you on the arse when you're not expecting it. Mm. You know, uh, you know, t- uh, when we won the cup, Tottenham fancied themselves to win it, and Coventry beat them. Uh, yes. You never know. You never know. There's, you don't know what Burnley are going to do this year. That should be interesting. Mm. Or Brighton. Brighton, yeah. 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 Brighton, Villa. Villa. Yeah. Exactly. And I love that. I love Man that it's Liverpool. different. Man United and Liverpool as well. They're all going to be up there. 100%. I mean, Liverpool but, definitely but, yeah, will improve. United will definitely improve. Pardon? You'd like to, uh, man, you'd be improved. But yeah, we need to improve yeah. as well. We need to be better than them. I mean, I'm not bothered about them. We've got to do the best we can. We've got to improve year in, year out. We've got to yeah. improve where it needs improving. And if you can do that, then we should have to worry about the other teams because we are not scared of these team, Louise. We're not scared of these yeah. teams. And it's been proved. It's been proved last season. Yeah. Yeah, well, that, well that's it. I mean, you've, got some, you've got some unbelievable fair players. And yeah. you've Starting to give, yeah, such a small room for error in football now. 
such a small, you know, the play. The teams are so close. There's going to be a group of play teams that are going to be so close, and it's going to take only the littlest, littlest fault. Like like Tottenham last year, they never yeah. did anything, and they've got some good players, and they were just they were shocking. And there's also not much time either. If things aren't going well, then there's instant reaction to that and instant change. So as well as it being only a small margin of error, it's also really a small time of error yeah, that's yeah. allowed. That's why I don't like football clubs, you see, because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. One of the prime examples of Leicester last year. How the hell have Leicester got relegated with the players they had in that team? And some of the players they had in that team. You don't know what will happen behind the scenes and you don't know the mindset of players or what's going on. And so hopefully, you know, everything is in place. Yeah. In place for Newcastle to just take off and there's no hurdles. Because there is going to be hurdles. There's, there's, they're going to have to jump through, jump over hurdles all season long. And it's, uh, it's the people that jump the cleanest and land the best. Yeah, you're right. Off. You're right. Absolutely. Totally, I, totally. I, Agreed. I was just Four. going to talk about number nine. Number nine there was saying that um, his dad was drinking you, drinking with you in yeah. Newcastle when you were a player for an hour, and he did, he didn't know who you were because he's not a football fan. Um, and I think that's that's about you. A bit. I think Leslie was kind of getting there a bit. I think you said you're you're not just a footballer. A fo being a footballer doesn't define you, and just having a drink in a pub with a bloke that you get chatting to is mm. is just as much part of you. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's the Irish in me. You see, you've always got to go out and have the crack. That's what life's all about. Uh, and just because I played football and played for Newcastle doesn't make me anything special. You know, I'm just the same as an old punter. Just sat sat there, have a beer, have the crack. And then move on. We're all going to say that's not true, though, because of what you did for us. You will always be special to us because of of that relegation scrap. You saved us from bankruptcy. Um, you know, I think I was talking today, and I was saying, you know, Kevin Keegan had said that you were his most important signing, and somebody else said you are Newcastle's most important signing because without you, we would have gone mm. bankrupt. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Says I that's don't, I don't, off that I, as well. I don't know. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know. Was, I can't. When I arrived in Newcastle, I can't understand why Newcastle was struggling at the bottom of the division. Because when you looked around the dressing room, they had a good team. I just couldn't understand why they were struggling. Did, did you did you do anything? Yeah, I was trying to talk about your leadership. Uh, what did you say? How did you lead? How did you help to bring about that change? I don't know. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did. We just just trained hard, had a laugh when we played football, mm. but did it right. You know what I mean? I think I think Newcastle then that everybody wanted to attack. Everybody, I think everybody just wanted to go and score goals. This was before the entertainers. This was the young young team. I think that they're a good group of lads, but. I don't think they knew how to defend. <laughs> well, they did, but they preferred going that way. They preferred mm. running on. And, and probably Kevin Keegan says, right, let's buy somebody that's not as quick as everybody else and it'll take him longer to get up the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> just, as, so, just as well so he they, did. So when, they give, so when they give the ball away, he's yeah. still there to defend. Oh, I don't know what <laughs> I did. I don't know what I did. I just probably stopped lads from flipping running off as much as they, they used to. Kept them closer together at the back. That's that's all it was. I yeah. just let but, them do what they wanted, but made sure there was people around me because I needed looking after as well. <laughs> yeah, so you got to make sure the people around you. Agree. I agree with yeah. you. Agree with you. Brilliant. Got one here for Jay as well. Um, um, question for you, Brian. Um, three serious questions coming in as well. Um, do you think former players have a role to play as amb as ambassadors? ambassadors at the club like Kevin Keegan and names been mentioned a lot uh, I don't I can't I don't I don't know I don't know um, ambassadors at the football club 
because I said to you something earlier about football that's evolving and Newcastle are evolving, it's a different sort of setup. It's a, and sometimes having the older players there can be bad for the new setup. You know what I mean? But you can. But then again, if you if you got a, if you got a team like Newcastle and the entertainers, they were winners. A lot of them lads that played in that team were winners. So, and it's a bit like humour. It can be infectious. And, you know, and personalities and sort of, them personalities can sort of spread onto other people and they can take that out onto the pitch. You know, like the Ginolas, you know, the, the flair players, yeah. Les Ferdinand, Alan Shearer, all these people that went, Rob Lee, the way they used to play the game. Um, but then again, you look at Bruno and the players they've got now, Isaac, they're, they're different They're different monsters. Um, they are. And they, they, are trying to, they are trying to create a, a different kind of t- a setup at Newcastle, a different kind of, a different kind of entertainers. But yeah. It's always sure. nice I, I... for the supporters to see the old players and just see what they're doing anyway. And it's an excuse for the old players just to go and see what the new players are doing. So for me, yeah. it's about the family. Newcastle, Newca- yes, and ask me all the time to go and watch Newcastle play. <laughs> yeah, because what I was going to say was, I think the ambassador role is important for Newcastle, maybe more than other clubs, because of the family nature of it. Um, it's it's like having all the family there. So they might not be influencing the game or anything like that now, but they're there as as history of what we what we do together and so for me i love to see it um, yeah um, yes 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 cool. and what go on louise go on louise for us go on jk the question so, yeah john's question what's the best ever football best memory in your playing, playing career play. best ever football in memory yeah <laughs> uh, uh, best ever. Best ever football memory in your playing career, like winning the FA Cup for Coventry, your best game in, for any team you play for, your best where you can feel yourself proud? Uh, my first cap for England as an England 21 listening to the national anthem. As a young uh, 19, 20 year old. That's that. That's that's a good memory. The FA Cup was a good memory. I've been promoted with football clubs, but being promoted is a, something that happens during the season. So, um, even my first goal, I can't remember that really. The uh, first sending off—that's not a memory that I should really cherish, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember it? Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> um, um, being booked for calling the the linesman an egg. Oh, no, that's... that's not good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, in years, years ago, years, years, years ago, when you used to get booked, they used to write um, a, some sort of form, send it to the football club, and then you used to receive it, and they would tell you why they booked you. And I can always remember as a young lad of about 19, 18 or 19, playing for Knotts in the then first division. And I got booked. And I get a letter sent to me, you got booked and you've got four points or something or other for calling my linesman an egg. And he was an egg anyway. Because he, <laughs> he, he was a dick of a decision. But uh, at least I didn't swear at him, did I? <laughs> called him an egg. You called him an egg. Yeah. I tell you, if you call the referee an egg today, you could be sent off. See that? You'd be off straight away. No, oh, if so, that's the point. That's the point. You can't, you can't, you can't talk to them like that now, can you? No, now you cannot because at the end of the day, right back then, you can get away with it and stuff like that. Even the referee used to have a laugh as well, but now you just cannot today. You just can't. Yeah. It's just, um, it's just where's the fun gone in football these days, guys? Where's the football gone these days? Does Brian remember his first match winning assist for Andy Cole in a 2 1 win away at Millwall? And what was his most memorable game in a Toon shirt? That's from Foxy, the South American. My most, 
Most memorable game in a... In a, in a black and white shirt. Oh, God. They all... I, I loved every one of them. I loved every one of them. Every time we played... Every time we went out and played on the pitch. Kevin Keegan used to look at me and say, oh, God, he's not doing that again, is he? Because they just, you just used to go out and have fun. You know, you played Chelsea. Even when we... Even when, I can remember I was raging when we played Derby and we got beat 4-1 and we got about three players sent off and I was actually raging. That's a game I can remember. Yeah. So when we played them the next season and we'd stuffed them, that was the start of when we had the run of 10 games and not getting beat. Um, that was uh, so rewarding after getting stuffed by them the season before. Um, let's... Best game for Newcastle. Mm-hmm. They're all right. As long as you win, the, as long as you win. <laughs> it, yeah. Um, well, the Leicester game was a good game because that meant we stayed up. Yeah. The last game of my first season. Um, and the Sunderland game when we beat them 1 0. Yes. Good choice, uh, good choice. Yeah. But all games, I treat all games the same. There's no one game that's different. And uh, I'm just happy to be out there playing and lasting 90 minutes. <laughs> or what? Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Fitness see... and not getting sent off. Even though I only got sent off twice in my career. Wow. Twice in the career. I mean, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, most defenders get sent about 10 times in their career. But if you get sent off twice in your career? I got sent off, sent off twice. I used to get my quota of bookings up until up until Christmas. And then after Christmas, I'd either get suspended just after Christmas, yeah. just before. Yeah. And then the rest of the season, I never got never had a booking. Or never had... Makes you a good, makes you a fantastic defender as well. You don't get me. No, the you, you see things. You had to earn the right. Mm. You had to earn the right to play then. So you give this, you give the centre forward a good kick in, because in them days they either spent the rest of the game chasing after you, so yeah. they're not bothered about playing for their team. Mm-hmm. So they spent the rest of the game chasing after you, trying to kill you, mm-hmm. or they got up and they weren't even bothered. Then you knew you were going to have a hard afternoon, or they went and hid, hid in the corner. Mm. So, which one of those was Eric Cantona? Yeah. <laughs> play, played against Eric Cantona. He was naughty, but he didn't play centre forward. He played in a deeper position. But uh, I remember getting rather irate with Eric Cantona once because he stamped on somebody, but he never got sent off for it. You know, stuck his collar up and uh, carried on. But he did get a few volleys of uh, verbal abuse. Yeah. Can picture him with the collar up. Yeah, <laughs> there's not many players placing a collar up these days. Not many people, but not many. You know, Eric, can I, there's not many Eric Cantona's around, is there? Is, exactly, and I will tell you what, I'm gonna tell you. You can fans know Eric Cantona. Let us know because I will tell you what, this guy is absolutely brilliant in his hair day. Fantastic, and um, Brian, you were the first son of the Keegan and the Entertainers era, just like Trippier was the first in this era. Do you think? They'll be known as the achievers. Um, it, what the the team now will be known as? What the achievers? Achievers. Um, I think so. I think I think every player. You know, you talk about Trippier being the best signing. I think every signing he's made has done something for for Newcastle. I I don't think there's a player or a player that he's t- brought to the club. That hasn't mm. uh, contributed in some some really good way. Every one of us. That's, that's right. true. I think Leslie's just created the name Achievers, so uh, I think she's yeah. uh, she's hoping it's going to stick now. Yeah, yeah, she's very clever, isn't she, oh, Leslie? She's very <laughs> clever and she's very articulate as well, and um, a lot of questions too, and um, she speaks a lot of sense too. So, yeah, we'll stick with that name for them for this this coming season now. Thank you, yeah, Leslie. Thank you, Les. Um, um, can Brian set a 36 year old argument when he lifted the FA Cup? Did he scream the killer or look at it? I'm not allowed to swear, am I? So, <laughs> hey, uh, 
<laughs> I'm not allowed to swear on the television, you see. So. He, he, he Look, did once. He did once. <laughs> I did once. No, I think I, but I think I, you got away with it. I think. I think. Exactly. Look at that, you bugger. Something like that, but it wasn't that word. It might have been another word. Yeah. And what was it like training at the Maiden Castle, Killer? What was there um, training like at Maiden Castle? It was, it was just, the thing was, Kevin Keegan used to make it like training was harder than the actual games. Uh, when you went out and trained, it was a harder session than the actual game. So when you went out to play, it was just like a piece of cake. And and so, that's something else that I sorry, I was gonna say that's something else I see with Eddie. He he really puts a lot into the, the training ground. So that's another similarity that I'm seeing. Yeah, so it's, but but I think I don't I don't know what uh, if it's, it's all drills and things like that. But we used to play large uh wasn't five a side, but it was it was large, small sided games, if you're the Marine. It wasn't a full size pitch. But the lads were out there and they were going at it full pelt against each other. And and he'd pick, he would pick his team out of how people train. So if you trained hard, you got in the team. Yeah, I like so, that work I think. But, but Coley couldn't hit a barn door in training, but put him on a football pitch, he could score from anywhere. It was wow. just unbelievable. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unbelievable, unbelievable. He scored from anywhere, but in, in training, he—I I don't know. He's just, he was just, he was just, he was just different. We put him on a football pitch. He was just frightening. And maybe he needed the extra adrenaline of being on, yeah. uh, you know, on the yeah. stage. All right. Or well, the people giving him a kick up the arse, the supporters cheering. It's true. It's true. Um, big up to J.K. Um, who did you enjoy winning against the most in a black and white shirt? I know you could say everyone, but the most joy could be Sunderland. Well, could be... well, Sunderland was a good one to win against. Yeah. Always. Always. <laughs> I was in favour of that. I enjoyed that because of the hype before the game, because I'd never played in a, in a, in a North East derby. I played in Nottingham derbies, but never played in a North East derby. And, Coventry, we, we we had Leicester and Villa and things like that, but it wasn't the same. There wasn't the same sort of. Uh, I can always remember going up to Newcastle and watching a reserve game, Newcastle reserves versus Sunderland reserves, and I think there was about twenty thousand people there to watch it. That's and, incredible! Uh, wow. But but the hype leading up to the, the the Sunderland game was unbelievable, and then to win that, you know, was uh, was good. It was a nice feeling. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Richard, hi to you, Richard. Did you ever find out who cut your moustache off? Captain Richard. Yeah, that... um... Oh, I know who did it. I've got an idea as well, but. So that's yeah. me. I've got ideas, yes. <laughs> we'll leave that one there, should we? Yes. Yes. We know who it is, but I'm not going to say it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> out of respect. Out of respect. And I've got one here. Um, I thought so was allowed on the JS show. <laughs> Pardon? But out of respect, out of respect. And um, Grace, you're on the difference. Yes, we're upset at John Louise. You take care, Billy Man, and um, watch what you're doing with it. And um, have a good weekend, but don't catch a horde. And um, and if you're a legend, hey, Leslie's the legend. <laughs> yeah, we're having, we're having a discussion about who's allowed to swear. And Le Leslie's yeah. got it right. She says, you can only swear on this show if you're a legend. Exactly. <laughs> so, so there you go. My missus has just walked out anyway, so that's the reason why I swore. She comes back in again and it's me swearing. I get a frying pan across the head. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think you I think you're gonna be safe because I think it's just about our wrapping up time. Nearly, right. nearly, quite nearly, nearly. It wouldn't be bad, but um, it wouldn't be too long now. And um, you know, and got one from Gareth as well. Does Brian think the transfer fees has gone over the top in the modern game? Uh, transfer fees. Yeah, it's exactly. always been the same. It's not, it's not the it's because it's not the players' faults or anything like that. It's because it's a business. Mm -hmm. Football's a business, and uh, and if you want to compete, you've got to pay the money. And the thing is, 
they're paying the money, so they must have the money. Of course, yeah. This and, is the thing. Uh, and they're, they're generating the money from somewhere. And see, the thing is, and when Newcastle, when, uh, when the guy was in before, he wasn't spending the money. He was still spending a lot of money. I think when he was here, he still spent a lot of money. But people weren't happy because there wasn't enough money spent. I also think it was the soul thing as well, though. It, you know, the, the, the soul and the passion. Like you say, it was run like a business and there wasn't that. Although I think the current owners are running it like a business, I think they bring soul to it as well. And that, yep. that's what I see as the difference. It's a bit like a film. You know, like if you go down and sit down to watch a film, like if you don't like the characters straight away, you don't like the film. And it's a bit like Newcastle, you know, when uh, the old chairman sat down, he said, I'm not watching this film. So he went away. But the, the new management that Newcastle have got at the football club, people just take to them straight away and they just, they'll, they'll follow them to the hills. I think. They've just got a nice way about them. Mm, they do. They do. Very, very genuine. Yeah. Yeah, Kate, hi, Kate, Jonathan, go for it. If you've got something to say, go for it. You've got Brian as well. You've got a question for him. You can ask him a question as well. And um, John's chatting to Les as usual as well. Yeah, like I said, you're right, guys. I mean, look, at the end of the day, Ash has got no ambition. He don't care, in my opinion. 15 years of him. And my God, it's just absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. And if you can tell us, Kate, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. And... Um, whether it's on side here as well. But the thing is, so as well, right, I mean, um, do you think Eddie Howe will be the customer manager for a long, long time, Brian? Do you think he's going to be here for the next five or six years? Uh, as long as you don't get bored, I think he will. <laughs> but I don't think he'll get bored at Newcastle very quickly. No, he won't. He loves the club. He loves Newcastle. Yeah. And the fans um, love him. And the fans love him, but the people in charge are giving him the tools that he requires to do his job. And I think he loves the football. I think he, he just wants to go to that next level. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the next level is. I think, does he want to He wants to win the league? Does he do, wants to do well in Europe? Uh, does he want to go into international management, being an Englishman? Um, but he's got to learn his trade. And plus, he's got some icons to follow, like the, the Bobby Robsons and the Kevin Keegans. You know, to, he's got to try and emulate them. Uh, and there's some shoes to fill. Exactly. You're absolutely right. I could not have put that any better as well. It's going to be tough to follow Eddie Howe, whoever comes in. And um, it's just some sad news as well. Um, so sorry to hear this, Kit. And then we could all this is, um, goes out to you, Jonathan, and the loved ones as well, and also Absolutely. in the chat as well. And um, kind of also with you as well, Kate and Jonathan, I do feel sorry about this tragic news as well. Losing a member of the family is so sad. It really, really is. And I'm just glad, Kate, that you brought it up as well. And condolences goes to you and loved ones as well. And um, fantastic show. Thank you for joining, Brian, and John o 99 p NFC shop gift card price draw coming up on the 90th 20th for members only. So if you want to enter the draw, you have to become a member for just 99p as well. And everyone sends all the thoughts to Kate as well. And on that note, um, we're going to wrap up the show. And um, it's been absolutely fantastic tonight. And um, Brian, did you enjoy coming on the show tonight? I did enjoy it. Very different. Very interesting. It's very... It's very different. See, the thing is, see, being an old git, you see, you've got to keep up with this as well, you see. This new <laughs> technology. Mm -hmm. You ah. did it. Uh, Perfectly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th you, I think I did. You've I done it. I, I mean, Brian, you were fantastic tonight. You were fantastic tonight. I thought you got big say to Louise for bringing you on as well. I was happy to do the show. And you know what it is, right, Louise? A big up to you as well for making this happen. Brian, you're an absolute legend in Newcastle United to me. Thank you very much, what you are Thank you, Louise, as well. Be, be, yeah, thank before you. I let, be, before I let you go, and um, do you, are you on any socials at all, Brian, or are you not a social guy, like Facebook, um, Twitter, so people can find you and um, tell the I'm story. I'm on Facebook, yeah. 
I'm on Facebook. I went on Facebook because about uh, 10 years ago, I got uh, some friends of mine who said, you're an ignorant git. I said, what do you mean I'm an ignorant git? He says, we sent messages to you left, right, and center. You've never bothered replying. Messages to me where? On Facebook. He says, I'm not on Facebook. So I went and looked on Facebook, and there was somebody pretending to be me on Facebook. Wow. And that's how I got into it and then started trying to chase it down. But you couldn't, then they don't do anything about it. I don't know if they do anything about things like that now. You know, like people trying to be somebody else. So then mm -hmm. I had to go around and apologize to all the people that he'd sort of dragged onto the site or that person. Yeah. And then you have to sort of go and apologize. Says, that wasn't me. This is me. Uh, and I'm not the dick you think I am. I'm probably a bigger dick, but I'm not. <laughs> but uh, that's how I uh, got into Facebook. Wow. I mean, thing is, uh, so on Facebook, you've got to be so careful. Like all social media as well. I mean, people make, make up names as well, and you just don't yeah. know what's going to happen. And, you know, you can fall into it as well. So you've got to be so careful who to follow. You might get a friend's request. You don't know them. If you don't know them, not sure, people in chat and guys, don't accept. Do not accept. And I've got one here from thanks so much, Brian, for tonight and the fun times watching you in the black and white. Thank you, Leslie. And John, how do me and Jonathan get on your live from Kier and Jonathan? Um, well, obviously, if you're on social media, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, right, you've just sent us a follow. And I'll follow you back, and then what we do, we talk about it, send you the link, and then I'll definitely get on the show, and we can talk about Toon Talk as well as so Open Show for all Newcastle fans or the Commonly Live Show. We can discuss things as well. So we go on to John Sinclair on Facebook, and if you go on to John, John underscore NUFC42, and give us a follow on Twitter as well, Kit. So that would be brilliant, and I'll follow you back as well. Louise, did you enjoy coming on the show tonight? I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Trip down memory lane. I um, I remember just thinking about the bankruptcy. We were trying to raise money desperately and I ended up having a bit of dug up turf and I planted it in the back garden in Newcastle because you, you had to pay to get a little clump of turf to try and, you know, stave off the bankruptcy. And that, that's a memory that I didn't know I had until I was thinking about this show today. So, yeah, I used to have a little bit of St. James's Park in the back garden. Those were the days, eh? Anyway. Where's that from me? Turf now? Still up there and I'm down here. I should have I should have <laughs> sold the house for more because of that, shouldn't I? I should have. There you go. There you go, Kate. That's me. Um that's my Twitter account there, John underscore NDFC42. Give us a follow on that on Facebook, John Sinclair. And um the links in the description as well. If you want to contact me, Kate, at any time. And Guys, if you like the video, by the way, do follow Louise Free Thompson as well on Twitter. She follows you back. And guys, gather really quickly backstage before you go. And make sure you like, subscribe. And whatever you decide, do have a great weekend. I'll be up in Newcastle on Saturday um, to get the Champions League badge on your sleeve. And if you do, if anyone sees this, come to me for a chat. I'll be happy to chat to you guys as well. Like, subscribe. And as always, how are the lads? The lads? <laughs>